Hi, uh, I'm Alex Kaufman. I'm an I'm interaction researcher, which means that I explore and prototype uh, future uses of technology as a way of understanding the future. Um, and I really, really hate Tom Cruise. Um, I specifically hate Minority Report Tom Cruise. <laughs> with his perfect haircut and his power stance, chopping at the air to sort of scroll through scenes of crimes that haven't happened yet, um, because it has conditioned us to expect that the future, future of gesture interfaces is gonna look dramatic. Um, you know, all the gesture tech we're building, the, the leaps, the connects, the myos, they all demand these highly visible gestures that are distracting us from a more pedestrian, less cinematic future that is definitely more usable than this. I mean, every time I see this scene, I think, Tom, you're standing two feet away from a screen. Why don't you touch it? <laughs> he's, he's, he's replaced direct manipulation, which our hands are really good at, with this kind of elaborate sign language, which our hands are really bad at. It's, it's, as, if, it's, it, it's, it's as if I said, like, it's the difference between solving a Rubik's Cube and explaining to somebody how to solve it by pointing. Um, and the thing is, we're, our hands are very coordinated. I mean, you can, you can be walking down the street and pick up a penny without breaking your stride. But unless you're a mime or a dancer, you're going to have a really hard time pointing at the same spot in space twice in a row. Anybody who's ever used a Wiimote knows it's really hard to point precisely. But I think there's a, there's a feeling am, among people that somehow getting rid of a controller makes an interaction feel more natural. And people have become so obsessed with this idea of getting rid of the mouse and replacing it with gestures that they've actually forgotten how we use our hands. Because most of the time, we're not gesturing. In fact, 90% of gestures occur when we're speaking. And studies have shown that all of those gestures, almost, almost to the last one, um, are for the benefit of the speaker. They help the speaker keep track of what he is saying. They convey no useful information to the audience. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that we can't use gestures and interfaces. What I'm saying is that we've got to pay attention to what their unique characteristics are. They are fast. They're silent. They can be performed at sort of any variety of distances. And most importantly, they have this kind of inherent directionality. So at least in theory, you could use gestures as this kind of meta-unifying input across a series de of devices. And what I mean by this is, for instance, if I point at my stereo and it turns on, and then I point at it and it turns off, and then I point at my TV and it turns on, and I point at my TV and it turns off, I've actually established a common language that both of these devices understand. And I can use this language as a way to connect them in a, way, uh, in a very intuitive way. So, for instance, if I point at both my TV and my stereo, if the TV is on, it pipes the sound to the stereo. Or if the stereo is on, it actually pipes the music video of the song that was playing or the album art. This all sort of presumes um, that gestures are, are these explicit and very deliberate motions. And I think actually the real magic happens um, when the applications start to pay attention to what we do with our bodies normally, what we do with our hands normally. Because once machines um, can interpret our normal motions, they can find some insight into our intentions. And machines that understand intentions can actually start to help us. Um, so for instance, if I'm sitting on my couch watching my TV and I pick up my phone, maybe I'm one swipe away from the remote control app or from the Netflix app. Now, if I happen to pick up my phone while I'm looking at my stereo, that same swipe might take me to my music playlist. Similarly, you can imagine a, you can imagine a situation where uh, picking up the car keys uh, from, the, from the table as I'm walking outside takes the last five addresses that I've looked up and just sends them to the car's nav system and uh, grabs that, uh, that podcast that I was halfway through um, and sort of sets it up on the, sets it, cues it all up on the car radio. Um, and ultimately, I, I think that this is what the Minority Report interface is getting at. Uh, I don't think anybody, um, not even Tom Cruise, really wants a Dance Dance Revolution version of Photoshop. <laughs> Um, I, think, I, think, I think the goal here is it's really f to help people to establish physical mastery over a digital world that's becoming increasingly complicated and hard to understand. And so I think in order to be commercially viable, these gesture interfaces can't require us to learn a new abstract physical language. They're just going to have to learn to find meaning in the movements that we already make.